Welcome everyone to a Han patch analysis here for version 4.9.3, which went live this week on May 25th on Tuesday. So before we get started here with the patch analysis, as always, I'm going to remind you guys to please drop a like on the video and a subscribe if you haven't already done so. Appreciate that very much. And let's go ahead and get started here with the patch analysis here for, as I said, version 4.9.3. So we'll go ahead and we'll get started here. We got the Han anniversary here. Heroes and Heroes celebrates its 11th anniversary. Can't believe it's already been that long, but here we are. Note that the list changes only applied an AU client. SDA will have their own event. Earn prizes by logging in. Honiversary events will take place from patch date to June 30th, so a little over a month there. We have new content, new loading screens in the game. We got some new HD avatars, Loki and Thor. Pretty cool throwback avatar. Okay, so here we go in design. Uh, I'm gonna skip over music. Here we go. Staff of the Master and Le Master's Legacy changes. So these are some changes here to some balance, and these specifically going to be the Staff of the Master. So Artesia Essence Projection is the ultimate Staff of the Master effect change to pre existing. The cooldown is now also reduced to 50 seconds while the Essence Projection is active. Relocation abilities cooldown reduced to two seconds so this spell is global with staff and now it has a shorter cooldown and you can move it around every two seconds that's pretty nifty not going to be like game breaking or anything just a nice little buff there to artesia's staff effect so that's cool okay moving along here to blitz the staff uh, effect addition new whenever blitz uses an ability blitz also applies quicken on self for one second, regular duration of quicken is the ability. Blitz's abilities no longer have cast time. So what this means is uh, you can be running around, auto attacking, and you can throw your spells without them kind of having any cast time, which is pretty nice. I don't think this is, again, like a game-breaking mechanic or anything, but it's... Uh, it, it means you can be like running away, for example, or running by somebody, stunning them, slowing them with your ultimate, etc., etc. You don't have to turn toward them and cast. Uh, it's a cool little effect there. Okay, so here we go with the next one, which is Devour, Guttling Hook, Staff of the Master, effect change to pre existing, cast range increased. Uh, it looks like 100 cast range per level increased. So, uh, I'm going to give you guys the reason for this, uh, which we're going to get to later. The reason that this is actually changed is because Jade Spire, which, as you all uh, probably are aware of, increases cast range of your abilities. Jade Spire, once we get down to the item section, did receive a nerf. So this buff here to the staff is actually just going to compensate for the Jade Spire uh, nerf. Uh, if you were a, or if you were to pick up both a Jade Spire and a Staff on the Devourer, so the big one here is the cooldown reduced by one second. So this isn't really too much of a change; it's more so just uh, in response to Jade Spire. Uh, but yeah, one more second less cooldown on Devo Staff Hook, pretty cool there. Nine seconds. Okay, here we go with Fade. So Fade uh, is one of my favorite heroes in the game and this one kind of excites me so we're going to talk about this one maybe for a little bit so reflection here this is the ultimate staff of the master effect edition new so again uh, fade did not have a staff effect this is brand new to fade reflections first on attack effects is preserved for five seconds if reflection expires without applying the effect after using reflection the ability becomes umbral dance umbral dance has three charges one charge of Umbral Dance is lost when the Reflection state expires. Target an enemy to consume a charge and teleport to them through the shadows, applying Shadow Walk to yourself 
for one second and applies 0.6 times of the original dot effect to the target does not stack with the original dot or itself also refreshes the timer on umbral dance range of 700. Uh, let me finish here and i'll read this and then we'll talk about this so this side of the master effect allows fade more freedom in her ability usage sequence and timings so while simultaneously granting her unique defensive properties after unloading her burst damage on her main target credits to who borrows for this up okay so basically how this works is you use your ultimate you can run around in viz and uh, instead of attacking them in melee range and breaking the ultimate applying that debuff you can you have a 700 range basically it's a blink strike where you can click on them and teleport to them and deal uh, this 0.6 times portion of the ultimate auto attack strike out of the reflection and while you're doing that you're getting your shadow walk which is your third ability so you become single target immune when you blink strike on people and you get three charges of this every time you use a blink strike you get a new five second timer uh, where you can wait to do another blink strike and it will refresh the five second uh, cooldown so you can stagger them every five seconds apart and blink and become single target immune for one second. It's a really cool effect. Uh, it allows you to not need to walk up to them in melee range to hit them, which is really cool. So you can do it from a distance. It's almost like a mini portal key that gets you on top of them with an attack. And you get to do that uh, three times if you're able to stay alive and avoid spells. So you can be really nifty with that, avoid uh, single target crowd control spells, uh, you can teleport different distances to different enemies, really cool effect. I think this is a really cool stuff effect. Okay, So we'll move on to the next one which is Kane. Face off, this is the ultimate staff of the master effect changes to pre-existing Kane, now also gains 50% damage reduction against damage sources other than the target. Okay, so that's pretty big. Char charges for the bonus attack damage effect are now stored retroactively. However, the attack damage gained this way has been reduced from 8, 12, 16 to 4, 6, 8 per charge. No longer grants an, op uh, an opponent bonus da attack damage if they win the faceoff. So the main reason why Kane's staff was so bad before was because if you lost the duel, you would give your opponent damage. And that's uh, very bad to p spend uh, the 4,200 gold for a staff or have somebody give it to you and then you're buffing enemies. So now you only can buff yourself if you win duels, which is very good, but also you're taking 50% damage reduction from everything other than the person you're dueling or face-offing uh, as the spell is called. So that makes him a lot more durable to, uh, to staying alive and being able to focus on his duel. That's a big, uh, big part of why Kane is not so, so good is that he can be very easily disabled, countered by items like Storm Spirit, etc. But now he gets damage reduction, so that's going to make this staff effect a lot better. I don't know how often we will be seeing Kane with staff, but it's definitely a more viable pickup now with these changes. So definitely a very good change to Kane's staff, as that was much needed. Next we have King Clout here, Goblin Toss. This is his first ability where he throws goblins, as it's called, Goblin Toss. Staff of the Master Effect Edition new. So King Cloud did not have any staff effect prior to this patch. Spawn rate per goblin reduced to two seconds. New goblin spawn can no longer be blue goblins. Chance of spawning a green goblin increased from 25 to 50%. So I believe the green goblins are the strong ones. Um, I'm actually going to cheat here, and I need to check, because I don't play a whole lot of King Cloud. I think it's red, then blue, then green. Oh, it's blue, then red, then green. So the blue ones, I believe, are the weakest ones. They chain. The red ones um, do the slow. And the green have the red effect, but they also bounce similar to like the blue ones. OK. So we'll go back here to the notes. So you get more chances for green. They are, the green ones are the strong ones and you will be getting the cooldown much quicker on the goblin respawn rate. So that's very good. And then here we have Parade of Power, which is the ultimate uh, cooldown reduced to 80 seconds. I believe it is either 100 or 120 seconds. Oh, it's actually 95. So 
uh, a nice little cooldown reduction there. 15 seconds does make a, a bit of a difference, um, especially if you have something like a Restoration Stone. So I like this staff effect. Very good. I think King Clout was definitely uh, lacking a staff effect, and this one uh, hitting both the ultimate and the goblins just feels pretty good. So I like that. Next we have Slither. It looks like this will be the last uh, staff effect change here for the patch. Poison Burst, this is the ultimate. Uh, so this is in addition to what it already does. Cooldown is now reduced to 50 seconds. Uh, down from 180 and 60. So not the biggest difference on the level 3, but if you do get it earlier in the game, um, it is a static 50 seconds. At least that's how I'm reading it. I don't see a scaling effect here, so... Uh, if you get a staff very early on Slither, it's even better uh, than if you get it uh, when you're already level 16 with the level 3 ultimate where it only changes the cooldown by 10 seconds. But still, that is a uh, 10 second difference from the 60 to the 50, which is quite nice. So, nice nice little uh, buff there to Slither's staff. Uh, most notably, if you can get it around level 11, uh, where it's a 30 second cooldown decrease. That's very nice. Okay, so those are the staff effects completed. Now we are into ranked pick mode here. Max number of hero bans that can take place at the end of the banning phase increased from 6 to 8. Max number of ban votes per player increased from 2 to 4. These changes should allow for more hero diversity in ranked picked uh, con games. So uh, basically what it says here, and I am all for this, I think hero diversity is very important. You don't want to feel uh, every time that you queue up a game like you are facing the same heroes over and over and over again. And I think adding more bands and giving each player uh, the freedom to kind of have a, a some kind of say in what those will be is very nice. So two more bands in total and two bands extra per player. I think that's very nice. Uh, to increase hero diversity. So I am a big fan of that. General here. Assist time threshold changed from 10 to 12 seconds. On live has been disabled. That is now considered a deprecated feature, i.e. does not work since a few years ago. So this doesn't really change anything. The assist time, that's a nice little QOL change. I think it won't be too noticeable, but it is still going to take effect two extra seconds. Very nice. Forest of Caldivar General, base hero kill bounty increased from 200 to 230, so a little extra gold there. Nice. Forest of Caldivar New, hero kill gold bounty per killed heroes level increased from 5 to 10. Base hero kill experience bounty linearly, non-cumulatively, increased by 15 for each level of the, of the killed hero. Okay, so... Uh, more experience, uh, more gold per hero kills. These changes coupled with the general hero kill bounty change to Force of Caldivar should allow solo heroes, particularly solo heroes that are in the middle lane, to have more impact on the game overall. Okay, I'm, I'm okay with this. I, I don't think these are game-breaking numbers. I think they are just going to, as this says, push that a little bit in that direction. So... Uh, that should be a nice little buff there for solo killing. Kongor, while invulnerable at the start of the game, Kongor is also visually hidden. Okay, so before you could see Kongor, he just wouldn't be, you couldn't attack him. Visual timer for Kongor now spawns when the game time initially reaches 0, 0, 0. Okay, this, uh, I don't, this doesn't really change anything other than Kongor is not visually there. Okay, now we have some pretty important changes, I would say. I, I don't know if I necessarily want to read through all of these, but basically this section here, it's going to say attack range adjustments. So ranged heroes, uh, not all of them, but a lot of them got their attack ranges adjusted. Some, uh, some got increased attack range, but majority, I think, got attack range reduction. And I'm just going to thumb through them here. We have Aluna, Arachna, Artesia, Blitz, Bombardier, Bubbles... Cersei, Defiler, Dr. Repulsor, Alonia, Emerald Warden, the Beastwood, F.A., Golden Veil, vale, Gravekeeper, Gunblade, Hellbringer, Icor, Malakin in his ranged form, Moira, Myrmidon, Nitro, Ophelia, Puppet Master, Pyromancer, Revenant, Rhapsody, Riftwalker, Sapphire, Shadowblade again in his ranged form, Silhouette, Scrap, Soul Reaper, Tempest, Thunderbringer, 
Torture, Valkyrie Vindicator, Voodoo Jester, Wretched Hack. So a lot of uh, a lot of heroes here uh, got their attack ranges, and a lot of these are reduced. You will very rarely see uh, increased, I, I believe. So a lot of these are reduced. We have a couple increased, like Cersei, Blitz, Artesia. Okay, so we'll go back down here. We'll read as to why this got changed. So, attack range has not been leveraged much as a measure of balance. In the past, 600 attack range has been a standardized attack range for most ranged heroes. If the hero did not have at least 600 attack range, they are considered suboptimal for lane performance. To break away from this, from this standardized attack range, many ranged heroes have had their attack range re readjusted appropriately. Attack range reductions have many factors contributing to them, with some of the heavier factors being overloaded kits and having long range harass tools already being good in the laning phase. Generally speaking, 550 attack range is the new standard for most ranged carry heroes, while primary support heroes will generally have 600 attack range. These are uh, There are some exceptions due to a hero's overall performance and due to the factors mentioned above. Overall, the changes to the attack ranges will enable more interactions in the laning phase and throughout the game since ranged heroes generally have to get closer to creeps and enemy heroes to hit them. Uh, the cast ranges of abilities and items can be adjusted in the future after seeing how the changes in this patch affect the meta. Furthermore, these changes are a small indirect buff to melee heroes in general. So, definitely true. Melee heroes getting uh, some love with the higher uh, attack range heroes kind of toning down their attack ranges. Um, but this is the main reason. So, 550 is the new quote unquote standard for ranged carries 600 for attack uh, for main supports and then exceptions based on their kits and uh, overall performances so those are those are some pretty big changes those are some changes that uh, you're gonna need to get used to when actually playing the heroes because the feel will be a little bit different for some of them uh, as some of those were like uh, 100 attack range difference not all of them were, were that drastic though some were just like 50 or 25 etc but uh, definitely some changes that will take some time to get used to. Now we have some movement speed adjustments as well, so very similar to the attack range. Uh, again, I'm not going to read through all of these, but a lot of these are, well, I think this is more 50-50, but a lot of increased movement speeds and a lot of reduced movement speeds. So we have Artillery, Blood Hunter, Kronos, Doctor, Repulsor, Drunken, Glacius, Gravekeeper, Grenex, Kane, Kinesis, Lord Cell Forest, Moon Queen, Uki, Plague Rider, Rampage, Ravenor, Soul Stealer, Tarot, Thunderbringer, Tundra, or Chief Sufferer. So, in conjunction with attack range changes, le leveraging base movement speed changes is another sub subtle change that will end up affecting the viability of certain underplayed heroes and toning down strong heroes for the long term. So, I'm not really going to look too much into that. A lot of this is like 10 movement speed, 5 movement speed changes, uh, like here, Moon Queen having very high, lowering that down a little bit. Um, artillery slower. Doctor is uh, going to be much slower here with 285. So going to be more reliant on his ultimate. It's going to make his laning a little bit weaker again. Glacius 5 less. Um, not sure if heroes like Lord need more movement speed. Uki getting less, that's fine. Plague Rider getting less. I think it's fine to be at 300, but this is a nerf to Plague, which is a little strange because Plague is uh, on the weaker side overall. Uh, Ravenor getting more movement speed. I'm not too sure if he needs it. His ultimate kind of makes him haste it already. Soul Stealer, I think it's okay for him to be 310 because he's a pretty vulnerable hero. Thunderbringer getting more movement speed. Not sure if he needs it because he got an attack range buff and he got <clears throat> some, some more damage, which we're going to get to later on. But everything else, fairly okay. All right, so these are the attack ranges and the movement speed changes. Now we're going to get into uh, the cut and dry hero balance here. And we finally made it to the hero balance. We're going to start here with Adrenaline. So Shard Blast is his primary ability. Base magic damage increased by 15 level 1, 10 level 2, 5, and then the same at level 4. So his early game uh, damage from Shard Blast getting buffed up here. Mana cost going down by, looks like, 5 per level. Cast range increased 
by 75, 50, 25, and then staying the same. So I believe the, this spell got nerfed last patch, so perhaps this is a bit of a rebuff or revert to last patch. I don't have the exact numbers in front of me, but these look very similar, the 80 damage level 1. I don't know if it was exactly that, but perhaps his performance fell off, and this is to get him back to where somewhere in the middle. Um, but again, I don't have those exact numbers, but I do remember him getting a nerf uh, in a previous patch. Death Silo, so here's the ultimate bonus strength per real hero caught increase from 345 to 456. Still two times the value for enemy heroes. A few small buffs were made to address his low performance after the most recent set of nerfs. Okay, so I was right, he did get nerfs, but now he's getting uh, readjusted again accordingly. Hopefully uh, this gets him in the correct spot. Uh, he was kind of reworked, so trying to get him in, uh, in the proper number range uh patch to patch so uh i don't think adrenaline uh was a problem in last patch so we'll see if this gets him back to uh being where he needs to be amun ra ignite this is the second spell no longer has a cast time i.e no longer interrupts your current order so no cast time means you can just pop your ignite and you blow up after the delay uh that's a uh, quality of life change Artesia Essence Projection. This is the ultimate relocation active ability cooldown when the Essence Projection takes damage. Reduced from 5 seconds to 2 seconds. Okay, so basically if people are attacking your Essence Projection, you can't reshift it, which uh, I think has good merit to it. Otherwise, that would kind of disincentivize trying to kill it. But definitely less hindrance here from 5 to 2. So um, you can move it easier if uh, you can move it more frequently as well uh, being able to change where you place it is uh, is a nice little buff to that spell so Artesia getting a lot of buffs I think uh, overall mostly to her ultimate but she also did receive 600 attack range uh, I believe she was at 525 or something so her primary supporting should be a lot stronger this patch um, she should be able to box out or have much stronger lane presence with her missiles and her attack range so we could see more Artesia main support, uh, perhaps. I, I still don't think she's really that great of a mid, although she can win her lane. She doesn't really scale uh, like other nukers do very, very well. So she's still mainly a primary support, but I think she's getting uh, uh, some nice buffs here in this patch. Balfagor Corpse Conversion. This is the third spell, which gives you the minions. Now gains three charges whenever the ability is learned or leveled. So basically what this means to me on paper is that you can now jungle level 1 much easier with Balfagor. Um, obviously if you lane him it's going to mean you can spawn the creeps and, and have better presence in the lane earlier on. But for me this one is uh, going to make him a little bit better in jungling. And he already did jungle fairly okay. He wasn't like a top tier jungler or anything. He was more of like a tier 2, tier 3 jungler. But he still had the ability to jungle um, nonetheless. Now that will be bumped up a little bit because the slow part would be in the beginning of the game trying to build up those charges. Now you don't have to worry about that. So we could see some jungling Balfagor. That's uh, that's always pretty cool. Gives the hero some more diversity. I like it. Uh, of course, since not only do I play the hero, but I like the jungle. So Balfagor getting a little love there to his early game. Berserker, Strength, Sap, cooldown reduced from 20 seconds to 2019, 18, 17. So pretty pretty small change here. Not Nothing really crazy. This doesn't uh, change much about the hero, just more so how he feels when you go to use the spell in fights or if you're trying to farm with it. It's mainly used to farm, but also uh, when you run into everybody and you go to team fights. So quality of life change. Not going to be game breaking or anything like that. Nice little feel change. Bushwhack, Spike Dart, this is his, I believe that's the first spell, should be the first spell, right? Oh no, it's the passive, the crit one, okay, sorry about that, didn't actually know that that was called Spike Dart, wait, so what's the first spell called? Crippling Dart, okay, they both had Dart in them, that's why I was confused. Jungle Toxin Charge, application to targets other than the main target when procking increased from 1122 to 1234. For enemy non-hero units. 
still applies one one two two charges to enemy heroes other than the main target within the area. This change ever so slightly helps push back with some of his farming problems, but only does so partially. So pretty straightforward change here. You hit more targets when they're not heroes. Uh, kill minions, kill jungle camps faster. That's pretty much what this does. Uh, Bushwhack's kind of a weaker tier carry hero right now. Uh, this hero, in my opinion, really needs Staff of the Master for him to become effective. Um, but this will help him at least with his farming, so nice change uh, for Bushwhack getting a little love there. Cersei, Intelligence Growth per level increased by 0.1. Doppelganger, this is the cloning spell. The second ability mana cost reduced uh, by, f looks like, 5 per level. Minor change here, this is Quality of Life feel change. This doesn't change a whole lot, but it is still nice. 5 mana per level. Not going to be too impactful there. Kronos, Time Leap. This is the Q spell. Mana cost reduced from 120 to 80, 90, 100, 110. Okay, that's actually quite a big change for Kronos. Getting 40 mana cost reduction at level 1. And even at the level 4, getting his spell down to 110 from 120. Uh, a lot of the times with Kronos, is the, the Leap and the Ultimate, I think, costs at level 6 or 7. It would uh, cost... Uh, I believe it was 270. I believe the ultimate's 150 mana. So Kronos does not have the biggest mana pool, and it was very hard to do uh, a leap and a sphere sometimes if you were not full mana. And I think that this m does fix a lot of Kronos' mana issues. Um, I would say he's kind of an underplayed carry because he just he, he does need a lot of time and a lot of farm to become really effective. Lake him, he is a monster, of course. Um, but this helps his early game, and that's going to help out his weak point uh, quite a bit. It's going to make his laning presence a little bit nicer, and he's going to have a nicer feel to play. Cooldown change from 13 to 14, 13, 12, 11. Okay, so gets a cooldown reduction of 2 seconds as well. So can leap in, slow people chase them down leap again uh more easier uh more easily with the less uh, mana cost as well so this is a uh, overall really nice buff to chronos uh to fix his mana issues good change devourer so he got a i believe he got a armor buff last patch as well starting armor increased from 2 to 2.2 now that's not a very big buff but uh, it is still a little bit more armor, which makes him more durable. This helps out his early game, most notably. Uh, now we have Hook. This is his first ability. Physical damage increase to... Wow, the level 1 gets 45 extra damage. Level 2 gets 30, 15, and then stays the same. So this is primarily targeting his early game. So he gets more early game armor, more early game damage on his Hook. This is going to buff up his roaming power, buff up his laning power, which uh, I, I'm i all for it. I think Devour has historically been very weak in lane, uh, does very little damage early game, but uh, once he kind of gets out of that like level 1 to 4 range, once he gets to like level 5, 6, 7, all the way from 5 to 10 in that level range, he, becomes to, or he starts to become very annoying and, and does a lot of stuff. So I like this to remedy his early game. Cadaver armor, magic armor increased. Oh, he gets one extra magic armor per level. That's really good. So he gets a vestment at level 4 cadaver armor. On top of if you buy vestments, you get another. That's really good. Bauer had few reasons to be picked over the other hook heroes, Gauntlet Prisoner. So his early game, laning power and roaming power. It's almost like I read this. Uh, I swear to God I did not read this out loud, but it's almost like I read this word for word. Received a large power spike. I completely agree. Uh, just from looking at the numbers, the hook, uh, the hook getting the extra damage. The big one is the level one. Uh, I think I skipped over the cooldown here. So he gets 12 second cooldown on level four. So two seconds less mana cost reduced. Uh, oh, that's even nice as well. He gets 10 mana cost reduction per level. So less mana, less cooldown, more damage. Nice, uh, nice buffs to devour there. And he's already. Uh, a community favorite. I think he has one of the highest play rates. So people love Devour. That's uh, going to be very good for uh, everyone who loves to play him. Drunken Master. Drink critical strike damage multiplier increase from 1.5 to 1.8 at level 4. Pretty cool. He's getting more damage. Drunken Master keeps getting buffs and buffs and buffs every patch. I'm, I'm surprised this hero... Uh, 
I don't, uh, what, what, what am I trying to say? I'm surprised we don't see him more often. I feel like um, from a number standpoint, he's been doing very uh, well in terms of patch to patch, but he still keeps getting buffed, so maybe he's not quite at the right spot yet, but um, definitely should be getting there very soon if not, because every single patch it feels like he's been getting some kind of nice addition. Empath, as one, this is the ultimate. While active, Empath gains 2, 3, 4 mana regen. That's nice. So she can uh, use more spells while having the ultimate activated. While active, single target items that could be double activated to affect yourself. Now target your host instead upon double activating. Very nice quality of life change. So it lists here all the items that you could double, double activate to cast on your host. Uh... Very nice. Makes uh, quality of life for empath players uh, much easier. Engineer the keg. So this is the first ability. The stun can no longer be double activated to throw the keg at your current position. This feature was not used in actual games and was a hindrance whenever it was accidentally used. Um, yes. I clearly put yes. I don't recall ever using this feature. I think people mostly use this on accident. It wasn't really something that was good. So it got removed, and to me that's uh, very good. I, I think uh, mechanics that aren't used should should not um, not be there if their intention is uh, not working properly. Fade base damage increased from 4650 to 4854, so he gets two to four more damage. That's going to increase laning power. Base Strength increased from 18 to 20, so more durable as well at the start. Reflection movement speed bonus increased from 10% to 20%. That is a nice buff. Going to be faster in ulti form. More lane power. These changes to make Fane more resilient in the laning phase as well smooth in our reflections general usage. So this, in combination with the staff, uh, will make for some very fun fade gameplay, in my opinion. Uh... I like that Fade's getting some love. I feel like um, Fade kind of comes and goes through different metas. Uh, many, many years ago, his ultimate was very, very strong, so we saw him all the time. Um, and I don't think he's quite at that spot anymore, so that's good. And I think that rebuffing some things are, are good to get his play rates back up, because I think the hero promotes uh, very good play styles for the game, promoting active uh, active gameplay. So I like I like this. Uh, definitely a little bit biased. Wouldn't lie, because I like the hero, but uh, I think the hero's play rate has been quite low, so very good nonetheless. All right, next up is Flint Beastwood, Dead Eye, bonus attack range reduced. Uh, so we have 100 here. Or no, sorry, what am I saying? 100. Uh, 10, 10 less here, 15 less here, 20, and then 25. So. Just some small range nerfs. This change was done in conjunction with the general attack range adjustment so that Flint Beastwood's attack range bonus is not too polarizing. Clear cut. Not not trying to make Flint uh, polarizing to play against. Forsaken Archer. Strength growth per level increased from 1.7 to 1.9. Intelligence growth per level increased from 1.8 to 2. Call of the Damned. This is the third spell that spawns those skeletons. Proc chance increased from 15 to 20 percent. Okay, so that's a little a little buff there. Getting some stat buffs. Piercing arrows. This is the ultimate. Magic damage per arrow increased by 10, 10, 10 per level. So I don't really think this spell was like bad or anything, but it's getting a little love. So going to be a little bit more damage. A lot of the time you use this to farm like triple stack ancients. It's on a fairly reasonable cooldown. So. Um, you can use it uh, for solo kills. You can use it for farming st stacks if you need to to clear stuff out quickly. Um, I think Forsaken's already in a pretty good spot, so this uh, just will maybe make her a little bit more flavorful to play, but it doesn't change a whole, whole lot. Gauntlet. Grapple. This is the hook. Cooldown from 20 to 16. Pretty nice. I like that. That's a four-second difference here, so like a 20% cooldown reduction. Uh, definitely going to buff up uh, his ability usage there. I like that. Has more synergy with the Infernal Instability, which is his Q spell. Nice buff there. So the both the Devourer and the Gauntlet getting some uh, some hook uh, some hook love this patch. Gravekeeper Defiling Touch. This is the E spell, the passive where when you throw a corpse it slows. Now 
starts off with one charge when the ability is leveled. Now starts off with one charge whenever Gravekeeper respawns. Cool. You don't have to throw a corpse or pick one up. I like that. That's a nice uh, QOL change. And then you can also uh, toggle that off when you don't want to throw the corpses, which already is a function in the game. So more quality of life changes. Gunblade, lethal range. This is his E spell. Can now toggle this ability to change your attack range to melee. Cool. So now, uh, well, you could already buy Rune Cleaver on a Gunblade, but now it um, makes it so that you can force your hero to uh, use it in melee range. I, th I think that's per perfectly fine. Uh, Gunblade, I think, is an underplayed hero as well, so he gets a little love here to his uh, mechanical usage like that. This one is going to be a big one. We have a lot of text here for Icor. I think I might just read it all, and uh, we'll just give like a general overview of like kind of what changed with the hero. Um, I'm not a big Icor player. I'm not. I'm not really uh, too crazy about this hero myself, but um, we'll go over him, of course. So, Life Leech. This is his first ability. Visual indicator on enemy targets have been improved to be more distinguishable, so that allies are more incentivized to hit the enemy to heal themselves. Percentage of missing health healed when dealing non-dot damage to the affected target changed from two percent to. 1.5 to 2.53%. So getting buffed at levels 3 and 4 here, how much healing you get when you attack the person that has life leech on them, the enemy specifically. Magic damage dealt changed from 90, 130, 165, 200 to 100, 150, 170, and 190. So all levels getting buffed except the level 4. It got reduced there. So this is mostly <clears throat> uh, buffing up the early game of the life leech damage portion, which uh, I think is fine because... This is quite a strong spell, um, but it is the main laning power uh, ability of the hero outside of his transfusion, which we're going to talk about next. So this is the second spell. Damage transfer from the ally unit reduced from uh, up to 60% to 20%. So that is a big change. It's a lot less uh, transfer reduction. Cooldown change. Uh, so lower at the earlier levels but still level four are still 14 at level four magic damage changed here so levels one two and three all got changed by 10 more damage and then the level four is the same so you don't transfer as much damage over to icor anymore it's only 20 percent but i think a big part of that is most likely going to be due to saint's blood here so base damage reduction against physical magic changed from uh these numbers to these so level 1 is stronger, level 3 and 4 are less. Bonus damage reduction per debuff reduced to 10% at level 4. Max damage reduction from Saints Blood reduced to 50%. Max damage reduction is now attained by having 4 debuffs on Icor rather than 3, 4, 4, 5 debuffs with efficiency loss on the final debuff. When Blood Rush is learned, so this is going to be the ultimate, Saints Blood gains an active effect. Target another ally hero to apply Icoric Blood to them indefinitely, only expiring if they die or if Icoric Blood is transferred to another ally hero. While within 1200 radius of Icor, damage dealt by Icor's auto attacks and non-ultimate abilities to enemy heroes heal the ally with Icoric Blood for 10, 15, 20 health. This effect is based on the level of Blood Rush. Range of 800, cooldown of 1 second. Well, that's uh, pretty nifty addition to uh to his saint's blood getting that active effect and then this is the ultimate which got reworked it's called blood rush now here you can see the cooldowns mana cost and radius um, activate to create an aura of blood around yourself for seven seconds while the aura is active allies within the area gain 20 attack speed plus an additional 10 15 20 attack speed per ally hero in radius enemies within the area also receive 30, 35, 40 true damage per second. So that could be up to 280 true damage uh, over the whole duration. Whenever Blood Rush deals damage to an enemy hero, it heals Icor and ally heroes affected by Icoric Blood or Transfusion within 1200 radius for 30, 40, 20, 30, 40 plus 1, 1.5, 2% of Icor's max health. This effect can be amplified further by 0.5 for each enemy hero hit after the first max of one time. Other ally heroes within the radius of Blood Rush that are not affected by Icoric Blood or Transfusion get healed by 0.5 this amount. So most heroes in the game have one-time burst heals. The most heals 
and most heals do not scale as the game progresses. The existing sp spammable sustained heal Soul Reaper demanded Shaman heal for a small amount of static health. The aim of the Icor rework is to transition him away from granting allies a large amount of damage reduction, that is Monarch's role, and to transition him to having sustained, scalable healing in team fights that scales as the game progresses. This playstyle makes Icor a proactive support hero with high durability that is encouraged to rush into the front lines of a team fight, damaging as many enemies as possible to sustain his team's health. His new Blood Rush ability also encourages his team to have at least one other frontline hero to take advantage of the healing around Icor. Transfusion still serves as a powerful mobility tool as well as a constant debuff transfer tool for protecting allies. So that was a lot of text. Uh, it's really hard for me to kind of gauge how this is going to affect him, but definitely these are uh buffs especially with the ultimate uh dealing damage now with uh, true damage and healing allies um and then he got some number uh reductions in other areas but overall his early game and laning power should be much stronger just from reading through those changes but uh that's one that's definitely going to need some testing and whatnot but uh, definitely a hero that wasn't really played a whole lot prior to this patch. So we'll see if uh, that gets uh, players to try him out some more. I, th I think he's going to see some more play rate, and uh, we'll see how he uh, how he fares on this new patch. So that was uh, a lot to talk about here, but we're, we'll move on now to the next hero, which is King Clout, Goblin Toss, Red Minion. Base magic damage increased... Uh, quite substantially here. Same as blue minion. Magic damage over time reduced from this to this, so a lot less there. Total damage taken over time remains unchanged. Green minions also inherit red minions effects. These adjustments was made to accommodate King Cloud's new staff of the master effect. Okay. Lodestone. Lodestone plates. This is his E spell. Damage reduction against the damage source with 150 or more damage increased from 35 to 40%. I don't think that changes too, too much. It's just 5%, but nice little buff there. Martyr, Guardian Angel, non-lethal, superior magic damage to allies has been changed to health loss based on magic armor. This results in no functional change other than getting the calculations to be correct if there are other damage. Mitigation amplification sources on the target health loss can now only reduce the target's health to a minimum of 7% of their max HP. Okay. Monarch... His Chrysalis gets 5% damage reduction extra per level. Small change to further differentiate Monarch from Icor. Monarch Chrysalis is one of the most powerful damage mitigation tools for a single ally hero in the game. I agree. I think Monarch is uh, very good for that, and this is going to not really change a whole lot. Buffs up the early game a little bit. The lower levels of Chrysalis are pretty weak, uh, so that's a small percentage buff there, and... Overall, above every single level because it was uh, scaling by 5% extra per level. Parallax, act attack action time reduced from 0.45 seconds to 0.35. Quality of life change makes this feel nicer. Pretty straightforward there. Parasite, infest, minimum cooldown increased from 5 seconds to 7 seconds. Okay, this is uh, fairly big. You have to wait 2 more seconds. Uh at minimum to jump into your next creep that will slow down jungling sw uh, a little bit and the rate at which you accumulate gold um i am very accustomed to the five seconds so the seven seconds i'll have to get used to um at least myself pearl asphyxiate this is her q spell magic damage on second impact increased by 10 at level 2 10 10 so level one is the same just some small damage buffs there to Pearl's Q. World Bubble max damage increased. Here we have 10, 15, and 20 damage. So World Bubble getting some damage. So Pearl getting some damage buffs on both Q and W spells. Soothing Presence reworked. So passively grants health regen per second to nearby ally heroes for each nearby ally hero. Passive effect is disabled while the ability is on cooldown. This uh, this actually means... I believe this is how it, it used to work. This makes Pearl better in tri-lanes. Because the more heroes you get uh, have in an area, the more uh, regen you get. So this makes her even stronger in tri-lanes than in dual lanes. But uh, 
Passive effect is disabled all the abilities on cooldown. Activate to immediately heal all nearby allied heroes for but lose the passive effect. So it's basically an astrolabe uh, effect, uh, instant astrolabe. You don't have to do the jump to heal anymore. Um, bubble pop, sub ability of soothing presence. So this is uh, a sub ability of the E spell. Target location to travel there by using bubble. Okay, so you've basically got the jump, but you don't do the heal anymore. Pro gets her old soothing presence ability back while still getting a leap to initiate escape as a support hero, although on a much longer cooldown. Okay, so you get 20, 20 second cooldown level 4, 35 level 1 with no bonus effects. The separation of the healing effect from the leap effect is necessary for Pearl to maintain her defensive role while still having enough offense to pose a threat to enemy teams with her bubble pop to preservation initiation combo. Yes, Pearl will be viable in mid wars. Okay, we don't worry about mid wars, but uh, I, I like this change to Pearl. I think the hero doesn't really deal enough damage and maybe this fixes that issue. And now she gets um, to choose whether she wants to jump in to uh, Maybe push people backwards or use her preservation, which is her ultimate. Uh, now you have the ability to instantly use the heal. Um, I, I like this change. I, I think this is nice. This will make Pearl feel more smooth to play. You, you get more. Um, you get to be more liberal in how you use your spells, which I, I, I like that. I think that that's good. And I think Pearl was not very good uh, of a support hero before so this this should make her feel nicer to play profit invigorate this is her his w spell cast casting target scheme change from self position to target entity can still only target ally heroes targeting an ally will still apply the heal on yourself now it has a cast range of 800 you can still double activate to cast the heal on yourself, propagating the heal effects to the closest ally within 800 range. This change was made to make profit viable for higher level play while still keeping the overall smoothness of his ability usage flow if he does not wish to target a specific ally hero. I love this change. I, I've played profit a couple times in the recent uh, recent weeks, and uh, basically what happens is like you're following your carrier around, which is what you do with profit. You heal them, they get more attacks, they farm faster, you sustain them. But what happens when your allies come near you and you don't want to heal them, but you want to heal uh, a specific hero? Uh, you have to be pos repositioning yourself to heal the correct target, which is a big nuisance. Like it shouldn't work like that. This is going to fix that problem. Uh, you can still do the double uh, activate to quickly heal the closest target, which if you're only surrounded by one teammate that you want to heal, that's fine. So this is a nice quality of life change. This makes Profit feel much nicer to play when you're wanting to heal that specific target, buff up that specific target with attack speed. Love this change. And I like that you can um, choose how you want to use the ability um, with two different forms of uh, using it. Excellent. Rampage. Stampede, movement speed, bonus, linger duration reduced from 1 second to 0.5. Horn strike, cooldown increased from 6.5 seconds to 7 seconds. Uh, these changes don't really change much, so I don't think that these are that significant. Uh, this just limits the frequency of horn strike by half a second, and I don't think this... Uh, Bonus movement speed of half a second lingering matters much at all. You're, once you hit the target, you've done your job stunning them. You can slightly reposition if you want to get behind them and horn them in a different direction, for example. But this doesn't really, I, I, at least on paper, I'm not seeing this really changing much. Riptide, in my element, no longer hides Riptide on the minimap to his enemies. I, I love this change. I, I think this has been a really stupid mechanic in the game for a long time. I, I really don't understand why uh, you wouldn't see the hero portrait or whatever on the minimap uh, when he's in his in my element. Uh, I, I think it's it was a really stupid thing that was in the game. I love that this is removed. Perfect Storm. While Perfect Storm is active, Riptide is now hidden on the minimap to enemies as long as there are no visible enemy heroes within 2,000 radius. So they, they just switched it to the ultimate. And I think that that's fine, because once he uses ultimate, you're already going to be aware of what's going on in the game. You know there's a Riptide running around. Uh, 
probably hunting for some kills or doing Congo or something, he's uh, you're going to be more aware of what's going on. So I, I really like this change. This is more so like a feel to the game kind of change uh, and a frustration factor being removed. So excellent. Shadow Blade, Strength, Agility, and Intelligence, Growth per level increased from 2 to 2.5. Wow, that's uh, half of a stat per level. Uh, so that effectively gives him, I believe, 12 and a half extra stats at max level to all levels. That's that's quite a big amount. Uh, this definitely buffs off his uh, his stack gain. That's, that's really nice. I don't know if he necessarily needed it, but maybe he was underperforming. He's been getting lots of changes recently. Um, we'll see how that affects him. Slither. Poison spray. Initial magic damage increased by 5, 10, 15, 20 per level. Magic damage per tick increased by 50, to 15, 30, 45, 60. So the big one there is the level 4 gets 10 damage per tick. And 20 more initial damage. Poison burst. Cooldown reduced from 140, 120, 100 to 110, 90, and 70. And then we talked about earlier in the staff of the master section, it gets a static 50 seconds at all levels with staff. Cool. So it'll change it from 70 to 50 if you have a staff. That's much better. I, I was actually I misunderstood uh, what it meant in the staff section. I thought it was 60 without the staff. It was it's actually 70 seconds without a staff. Now it'll be 50 seconds with a staff. So a 20 second cooldown reduction if you have staff of the master. That is very good. Poison burst is a very strong team fighting ultimate. Um, a lot of magic damage. Soul stealer. Soul loss on death reduced from 50% to 40% of your current number of souls. Not a big change, but a uh, feel change there. That's nice. Okay, Thunderbringer. So this hero got a lot of love this patch. Um, attack action time reduced by 0.1 second. A little nicer feel on his auto attacks. Chain lightning cooldown reduced by 0.5 seconds. That's pretty good. You can spam chain lightning pretty much almost for every single creep kill. Uh, as long as you have the mana to do so. Very good. Blast of Lightning, cast range increased. Every level got more cast range. Okay, it gets 800 at level 4. Magic damage increased by, looks like 25 damage per level. Stun duration increased from 0.1 to 0.1, 2.3.4. So 0.4 is a pretty significant mini stun. Uh, clear vision and true sight duration increased from 4.5 to 5 seconds. That's not, that's not really a big change. Lightning Storm, Clear Vision, and True Sight Duration increased from 4.5 to 5 seconds. That's not a big change either. Half a second extra sight duration. Thunderbringer has not seen high level play because of having little utility in his kit. He is designed to be a simple hero by, de by design and should remain that way, so some general buffs. Coupled with the general attack range, changes to the hero pool should make him viable in some team compositions at high level play. So he also, I believe, went from 350 to 450 attack range. That's that's a pretty big change as well for Thunderbringer, making his laning phase a lot better. So he, got, he has better attack action time, better attack range, shorter cooldown, more damage. Uh, this hero got a lot of stuff uh, this patch, so... Definitely one to keep an eye on, especially with, um, I believe it was two patches ago, the Grimora power change. Um, getting that active spell of 30% spell damage to self for 15 seconds and 20% cooldown reduction. So Grimora on Thunderbringer is super nice. Uh, I think we're going to see a lot more Thunderbringer. I think this hero got a lot of love this patch. I don't know if he's going to be too strong. That I, that I cannot say for sure. But... Uh, from a number standpoint, he got a lot of things added to him, so perhaps maybe one or two too many things, but we'll see. Um, again, it, it's really hard to gauge if this is too much, but um, definitely this hero was very weak, I think, before this patch, so this will definitely make him feel a lot nicer. He'll deal more damage, um, just, just have more consistency. I, I, I like the changes overall. Tremble, Terraform, so these are his mounds. 
Terra Mount cast range changed from global to 600, 2,000, 5,000 global. So they're no longer global at the early levels. Boris, number of hits to die reduced from 3 to 2. So this is when you send out the mound and it travels across the map. Again, you can't do that uh, globally until it's level 4, but you can do it on a fairly decent range at levels 2 and 3. This change was meant to prevent players from globally destroying trees without putting themselves at risk at the start of the game. It is It only affects high level play for the most part. Okay, so this is the reason this was changed. People were just killing all the trees everywhere and spamming that. Uh, I've done that myself, so I completely understand this. Um, just, uh, you have to be in range of whatever trees you want to destroy. So, small nerf here. Not, this isn't going to, like, make or break Tremble's uh, play performance or anything. It will reduce his uh, global presence in the early game by, by a little bit. He'll need a little bit more time before he can start putting those mounds around uh, all parts of the map from wherever he started in his laning phase. So it does slow him down a little bit, but uh, it, it still gets global at the level four. So in the early to mid game stage, or once you get to the mid game stage, it, he's more or less unaffected. So. That's good. He doesn't really... Overall, it's not like a massive nerf or anything, just changing the early game, like it said there a little bit. Tundra. Strength gain per level increased from 2.5 to 2.7. Avalanche. This is the ultimate cast action time reduced from 0.5 to 0.35. So faster cast uh, of the ultimate. That's that's pretty cool. Mana cost reduced from 150, 170 by 200 to 130, 160, 190. So getting some mana cost love there. On the spells, I don't know if he needed this, but uh, he doesn't. I, I guess he's he doesn't have the biggest mana pool. He's a strength hero, but uh, the level three is almost unchanged. Twenty, then fifteen, and then ten mana. It's it's not like a big big number. The big one is the level one. You get twenty less mana cost. Food adjuster Mojo now applies its 0.5 time of the effect to other affected units within 500 radius of the target. Okay. Give some extra healing to the team. All right, so that's actually all of the hero balance. Uh, we're now going to enter into the item balance, uh, and, I, and I think we have quite a bit to talk about still here. We're, we're getting close to wrapping up the patch analysis, but uh, we got some new items in the game. We got some item build-up changes. Uh, we'll go through all of the items now following up the hero balance. So the first one here on the list is a new item called Blood Ruby. Cost of 550 gold, and it passively grants plus 150 max health. So this is a pretty straightforward item, uh, not too expensive. It gives you a little bit of health, and it's going to be, uh, as it says here, a build-up item for other items in the game. So that's fairly straightforward. Now we have its counterpart here, Ether Jewel. Uh, Ether Jewel, Ether, I think it's Ether. Uh, I forget how you pronounce that, but cost 450 gold, passively grants plus 120 max mana. Access to build up item for other uh, items in the game. So these two items, one gives health, one gives mana. The mana one gives less and costs uh, 100 gold less. And those are going to be build up items for other items. Nihil Crystal is a new item. Costs 200 gold. Passive effects. Grants 0.5 mana regeneration per second. This effect does not stack with itself or a Deev's Cloak. While off cooldown, upon taking an instance of an attempted 60 plus non-dot spell damage, Regenerates 40 health and 20 mana over 10 seconds. So that's 4 health and 2 mana per second. Places the item on cooldown. Cooldown 30 seconds found in the relic shop. So this item, it's a laning phase item. Actually, let me read this first. Nihil's crystal is another option for health and mana sustain against spell damage while in lane. So yes, exactly. It's a laning phase item. It will be a semi-reliable source of sustain for heroes in the suicide lane. So Okay, so this is designed to be for off laners. Um, I think I think anybody could really buy this though because uh, if you're laning against some kind of a spell spammer that deals 60 plus non-dot spell damage, so the the one that comes to mind right away would be like a Thunderbringer. So Thunderbringer presses his uh, Q spell on you, which I believe does like 75 or 80 damage, and then you're gonna regenerate 40 health of that damage over 10 seconds. And I will have a 30 second cooldown, so you're I don't know how good that's going to be actually, but the idea is there. Some kind of a spell spammer, or maybe not even a spammer, just some hero that has like these uh, fairly small, smaller nukes. Um, you can heal like a good chunk of that back, 
and do that like once every 30 seconds for for 200 gold that's not that bad actually it's a pretty inexpensive item you can buy this at the start of the game or you could buy this like after you get a couple creep kills um and just send it to yourself so that's pretty cool um i think this builds into this new item here a Deeves cloak so let's go over this one components it's a blood ruby an ether, ether jewel a nihil crystal and a recipe of 1100 which makes it for a total of 2300 gold and it can be upgraded one time for a max item level of two so the total cost is the 2300 initial or 3400 if you rank it up to level two passive stat bonuses you get this much max health this much max mana and you get some mana regeneration. The passive mana rege regeneration bonuses does not stack with itself or nihil crystal. Passive effect while off cooldown. So this is the passive effect of the item. Taking damage from player controlled enemy sources starts a three second timer on the item and starts accumulating damage. The timer is refreshed each time you take damage from player controlled enemy sources. If the accumulated post mitigation damage exceeds 20% of your max health or 300, whichever is higher, while the timer is active, the item is placed on cooldown and a Deeves protection is applied for three seconds. A Deeves protection applies. Uh, you get some health regeneration, you get some mana regeneration per second, increase your debuff and stun reduction by 15 and then 40 percent so the level two is much much better than the level one reduces incoming damage by 15 or 40 percent so reducing 40 percent damage is quite good that is uh you're getting more debuff and more incoming damage reduction uh reduces your damage output by 85 and then 60 percent so this so what this means is this is meant to be a purely defensive item you're not supposed to use this item to survive something and then get off uh your full combo or whatever it says a cooldown of 80 seconds found under the protective category in the shop Let, uh let's actually read through all this before we say anything burst damage has been an incredibly potent highlight of han's lifetime to the point where not much can be done against it, i.e. the burst damage cannot be humanly reacted to. This item serves to mitigate the damage incurred from a surprise blink initiation without needing to react to it so that your character has a more likely chance to respond if they are caught off guard. It is important to note that this item is, is not meant to be a hard counter against opponents with amazing initiation. It is still very possible the wielder can still die even with these effects. It is just another tool for heroes who benefit greatly from using their spells in a team fight to have a chance to use those spells instead of simply dying from burst damage. This item provides no offensive bonuses and costs a decent amount of gold for its benefits. It is intended to be a niche item for certain heroes in specific game scenarios and is generally disincentivized for certain core heroes and carry heroes. Okay, I, I think that was a pretty good analysis. So this is meant to be a defensive item. Perhaps you're split pushing. Um, you want to survive a jump that you can't react to. Uh, you're going to become more durable. You get stun, debuff duration, reduced uh, incoming damage by a certain portion. And then if you were to try to get your spells off uh, in this timing window, you would your, yourself deal, uh, reduces your damage output by... 85 or 60 percent so you are also weaker for that duration so that's the counterbalance to the item which i think is very good uh, i'm trying to think other than like split pushers like what kind of heroes are really going to want this item um maybe support heroes but i don't know if that's better than like some other tools that supports kind of need throughout the game um so i don't even know how popular this item will be because it is a fairly good amount of gold if you're going to invest the 3400 uh you know to kind of survive or make yourself more durable i think you're doing that only if you're like forced to split push maybe but uh again i'm not really too sure it's it's hard for me to say how these new items will really um, be utilized or impacted on, on the game i i don't know if this is like an over the top item or not i i feel like this is a very niche item uh that maybe only select heroes are going to want to take advantage of so the next one here, another new item is Foxbow. Components, Alacrity Band, Soul Scream Ring, Fleet Feet, Recipe. It costs a grand total of 3,000 gold. Grants 30 attack speed, 8 strength, 14 agility, and 8 intelligence found under the combative category in the shop. So right away, this to me looks like an item for agility heroes. You get attack speed, 
you get primarily agi uh, prim primarily agility. You get some strength and intelligence with this, which is not bad. Eight is eight is decent, but this is primarily for agility heroes. It looks like you have a range of 700 on its activate cooldown of 20 seconds. Active target an enemy hero within cast range, so within this 700 cast range, to gain 70 bonus attack speed, infinite attack range, and a 50% chance to gain true strike against the target for up to 6 seconds or 4 attacks. Only grants infinite attack range on ranged heroes. So this is not an item for melee heroes. This is for only ranged heroes. And as I said, probably agility heroes. So ranged agility heroes. This looks like a very specific item. Note that this behavior will not allow your hero to attack another target that is currently outside of your regular attack range due to existing coding limitations. Your hero will not attempt to attack if you try to do this. Foxbow allows heroes to have a method of finishing off fleeing targets that escape their attack range while offering a mid-cost pickup option for ranged heroes that grants a decent amount of survivability. That's true, you do get 8 strength for 3,000 gold, and that's not the main effect of the item, so true. Uh, I'm trying to think of when you would really want to pick this item up. Uh, is this item going to be something that a hero values over something else? And I, I, I'm honestly, I'm not too sure when you would want to be picking up this item to have that extra attack range. And it, it only lasts for those four attacks, so... Uh, it's like the item says, you want to finish off somebody that's kind of fleeing away out of your attack range. You have to use it on them when you're more or less in attack range. And it does have a 700 range, which is larger than uh, what will probably be your attack range, because most heroes have less than that. Well, everyone has less than that, unless you have Wingbow on select heroes. But um, yeah, the Foxbow, you can only cast that if you're in range of them to begin with. I don't know how good this item is going to be. This, is, this one's pretty hard for me to gauge. Uh, the thing that comes to mind, at least like right now, is like a silhouette. You have your illusion in your base, you foxbow, then you swap to base, and then you can like attack somebody from across the map. But uh, outside of that, I'm not really seeing any kind of like broken feature or like something that, that's really going to benefit. And then even then, would I want a foxbow on a silhouette over something else? Like like a geobane, a wingbow, uh portal key i i don't know if this 3000 gold that i'm investing into a couple extra hits being infinite I, I, like i don't know if that's a uh, an item slot that i want it, it, that, this one's hard for me to gauge so it, it's a cool new addition but i don't know how good or bad this one's going to be at least right now items with build up changes okay so these items i don't know if they're getting any changes per se but arcane bomb new component build up blood ruby Ether Jewel, Ether, Ether Jewel, and Recipe. Uh, 1900. It originally costed 1650, so it went up in price. Has a very expensive recipe before it used to be a really cheap recipe. No longer grants four strength, agility, and 14 intelligence. Now passively gives 150 max health and 180 mana. Arcane Bomb now gives about twice as much max health compared to before, while being slightly easier to build up and being able to take advantage of some changes earlier the item is quite prevalent in the meta uh, that's true arcane bomb is almost in every single game uh, it's good against illusions minions so the total cost has been increased to account for all factors these changes are both a buff and a nerf okay so the stats in general i think you'd rather have stats than the max health but now you get more max health uh, so you'll be a little tankier um, it is a little bit slower to get the item but uh, Arcane Bomb was pretty strong for its cost, so I'm, I'm okay with this costing a little bit more. Brutalizer. New component, build up. Slayer, Mighty Blade, and Recipe. So it used to have a Slayer, a Bolstering Armband, and a Recipe. Now it has a Mighty Blade. And I think way back in the day it used to have a Mighty Blade and maybe a Quick Blade or something. I, it's hard for me to remember so long ago, but I vaguely remember a Mighty Blade being in the Brutalizer recipe a long time ago. Uh, but it went down in total cost by 50 gold. Passive strength bonus increased from 8 to 12. That's good. It gives more strength. Physical damage on proc increased by 35. Okay, so the bash effect does more damage. That's really good. Uh, stun proc. Okay, it, it went up by 0.1 seconds. That's really not noticeable. But you get more strength. It costs 50 gold cheaper. You get 35 more damage on a bash. Overall, these are good changes. Brutalizer had little reason to be bought, so some proper adjustments were made to make it a more commonly viable option for heroes to use. Um, yeah, 
this item is not really seen a whole lot. Maybe this bumps it up a little bit. I, th I think it's still going to be the same types of heroes buying the item. So I don't think really anything changes. Codex, new component buildup. Neophyte's book, major totem recipe. Oh, it costs less. Uh, it used to cost 3,000 gold level one. Now it costs 2,540. So it's, it's cheaper to get. No longer grants bonus attack damage. Now grants... Uh, strength, agility, and intelligence. Oh, okay. So you you get oh this is for the five levels of codex I'm guessing. So you get you get some pretty good stats while you level up the item. Magic damage dealt by the active part of the item changed from so this is what it used to be to 350, 450. So this is 50 less. This is 50 less. This is the same. So the early levels are weaker. Level three is the same. Level four is stronger and level five is stronger. So it went up by 50 and then went up by 100. So levels four and five of codex are stronger. Levels one and two of codex are weaker. And, and that is going to be due to the price point being changed. You get it earlier. So that makes sense. And you're getting more stats. So overall, this item I think is better. Cast range changed. Uh, you get less cast range on it, which is fine. Cooldown changed. Oh wow, a lot less cooldown at the earlier levels, and two seconds cooldown change on the level five codex. Mana cost change to oh, so now it goes up instead of down, which I think makes more sense. Uh, early game you have less mana pool, late game you have more mana pool, and you're dealing more damage. Visual effects for the lightning now change with level. Oh cool, you get different colors per level of the item. Credits to why so serious. Good job, Will. Thanks for your visual effects changes on the Codex. I'm sure those look awesome. Codex is always known as a non-viable item because of its lack of relevant bonuses while building it as well as its high cost for what it grants. Making the item more accessible early on at a reduced price cost while increasing its rewards as you level it should make this a more viable item pickup in actual games. I think I agree. I, I think fi almost 500 gold, 460 level 1. That's a, that's a big difference. Uh, although you get 50 less damage on it. I think that's really good. And as well as all the other stat bonuses and uh, cooldown re uh, reduction, mana cost changes, I, I really like the direction of what Codex went, uh, went. I think that's really good. Puzzle Box. This has different component buildups too. Blood Ruby, Ether Jewel, Ether Jewel, Recipe. 2,500 gold total. So it used to be 2,975. Now it's 2,500 at level 1. The level two went down, or as well as the level three, due to that recipe cost change. So puzzle box, you can get it a little faster now at every level. It no longer grants strength and intelligence. It now grants max health and max mana, and then a little bit of damage. Four, seven, and ten specifically. In today's meta puzzle box, it takes a little too long to build up. These build up changes should buff the item so that it sees play more often. I love the item. I buy it quite frequently. I will continue to buy it. I'm going to get it a little bit faster, but not too much faster. And I'm going to be less durable and less smart, but that's okay because you buy a puzzle box for the minions, uh, what the minions do. And that's the main reason for the puzzle box. So I am fine with this change. I like it. And if it happens to be too strong, which I don't think it will be, it could always get nerfed. Light brand line of items. Light brand searing damage over time. Effect increased from eight to nine magic damage per second. Max charges reduced from three to two. Okay. This reduces the overall searing damage by 25%. So nerf to light brand overall here. I think we're gonna see the same trend here. Frozen light, same thing. I'm not gonna read through all of these. This number changes. The charges are, are down from three to two on all of these. Dawnbringer. Effect from 18 to 15 magic damage per second, searing uh, down by one charge. This reduces the searing damage by 45%, though, so this is a big one. Movement speed slow reduced from 40, 20% to 30, 15%. The wielder is a melee range. This is a big one because Dawnbringer slows through magic immunity, and uh, it's, it's a big reason why Dawnbringer is so strong in mid to late game because you're chasing the other team's core hero who's got a shrunken head down with your Dawnbringer and you're slowing them, so... 10% is quite a lot. 5% for ranged is okay, but the melee one is really big, 
I like this. Diamond Ringer is a tattoo effect despite its high cost. Its passive on attack effects were toned down closer to the level of the tier 2 brands. Light brand items in general were too efficient for what they were doing, so their steering damage numbers were readjusted. I agree. People were buying Dawnbringer on everything. Uh, the item was just overtuned. Uh, hopefully this brings the item in line to where it should be and we'll see different item builds on different heroes and we won't see Dawnbringer all the time, but we will still see Dawnbringer. I think Dawnbringer will still be very good. So I love it. I think it's great. Uh, Alchemist Bones. Oh man, how to get what you got excited. Alchemist Bones. Gold Bounty from killing a creep with its active effect increase from 165 gold to 190 so you're getting 25 more gold every time you transmute a creep that is excellent so basically what this means is uh, you spend 1900 gold on an alchemist bones how many times do you need to use alchemist bones for it to pay for itself you need to use it 10 times quick easy math uh, 1900 divided by 190 is 10 so you use this item 10 times and you've already paid for itself and then you have an extra item in your inventory which you can always replace later experience bounty multiplier from a creep kill with its active effect increased from 1.75 to two times now a lot of the people will say uh to me wig uh you buy alchemist bones all the time and they they always comment on what creep i transmute and i always have to explain to them I use Alchemist Bones because I want to get my hero to level 16 as fast as possible. I, the, re, the main reason you buy Alchemist Bones on a lot of heroes is for the experience boost. You want to uh, reach those tier 2 and tier 3 ultimates where your hero hits power spikes. And a lot of people don't realize that that's a big part of why Alchemist Bones is a very strong item. So you're getting that extra experience boost quicker into the game. And now you're getting a buff to that as well. This makes this item very, very good. Uh, many, many years ago, Alchemist Bones was picked up uh, in, in certain metas on so many, so many heroes. And a lot of that was due to uh, getting that experience and the gold uh, quicker. And I, I really like the direction Alchemist Bones is going in because uh we it, it just hasn't been as good as it as it used to be and and there's not a lot of reasons to pick it up other than maybe you're against an ophelia or a parasite or you want to uh transmute uh an enemy's whispering helm creep if they're like a war beast or something for example so there's these uh, certain niche situations where alchemist bones is is going to be a pickup for your game but but now i think there's more flexibility in picking up an alchemist bones and it's it's less punishing to pick one up now and and much more rewarding because of the benefits you get so i love this change specifically i think we'll see alchemist bones more uh in the game and and i think that that's uh that's good Beast Heart, max health increased here by 15. Not a big change. Doombringer, uh, base attack damage bonus increased from 250 to 300. Max charges reduced from 25 to 20. How often did you ever get a Doombringer and you got it fully charged? Almost never. Uh, the, well, I'll read this line here. This makes the item more of a viable pickup for comebacks if they are tempted in specific scenarios. This is it. I mean, when, when do you buy a Doombringer? You're down like two Raxes. The enemy team's pressuring your base. You need a comeback mechanic. It, it, it's almost cut and dry. This is when you buy a Doombringer, uh, uh, you know, in realistic situations. So this basically just kind of further helps that uh, idea of a comeback uh, mechanic. So completely fine with this. I don't think this is game breaking or anything. It's, it's, it, it's, it's an item you see like maybe one in every like, I don't want to say a ridiculous number here, but maybe like one in every 200 games you'll see somebody pick up a Doombringer. So it's it's really not um, super, super drastic there. Dreamcatcher, while not at max charges, passively gains one charge every three minutes. I love this change. I think this is great because you invest a lot of gold into this item and you have to you have to get a kill, I think it is, with it to get a charge on it once you use the initial one that you get from buying the item. And well, sometimes that just feels really awful. So now you at least have a, a way to gain the charges retroactively. I, 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 lo I love this change. This is a good one. Ghost Marchers. Ranged heroes not only receive 50 moments to be bonus from the active state instead of 20%. Small change. Completely fine with it. Golden Apple. No longer passively grants mana regeneration. Instead, now passively grants plus two attack damage. Okay, this is a pretty big change to Apple. So you don't get the passive mana regen anymore, but instead you get two attack damage. This means it's better on core heroes, like carry heroes, 
uh, to pick up an apple in the early laning stage. You get the little extra damage. If your support has a synchronizer, or Bobzamo, sorry, I think the name is called, uh, then you get bonus attack damage from that as well. Apple gives attack damage. That's awesome. Uh, I think Apple was a little bit stronger than Lunar Tier, which we're going to get to in a second. But I, I love to. I want to compare the two because they're basically counterparts. One gives you health, one gives you mana. One would uh, give you mana regen, the other would give you health regen. So Golden Apple was just seeing, I think, far too much play in comparison to Lunar Tier. And I think now with the two changes, once we get to Lunar Tier, uh, we'll see them a little bit more equal, which is, I think, the goal here of the change. So I like it. I think Apple was overused in comparison to Tier. Jade Spire, bonus cash range reduced by 100 here. Reduced cost... Uh, or sorry, recipe cost reduced from 600 gold to 300 gold. Total cost reduced from 2400 to 2100 gold. No longer has item drop or pickup restrictions, though its cast range bonuses still do not stack. No longer has a different version of the item in Midwars. Cast ranges are integral to relative hero balance, and modifying this value too much makes some heroes more polarizing than others if they attain this item. The cast range bonus is still large enough to make a difference, but it is, but it will be nowhere near... Uh, nearly as frustrating to deal with against certain heroes while still providing a reasonably potent cast range increase to make a difference. Okay, so it's cheaper, it gives less bonuses. Um, I don't know if uh, 150 cast range is going to make this item super appealing anymore, but there are still some heroes like you know, like Blacksmith, Polywog that come to mind, Devourer, that maybe just having that extra 150 range could be worth it. It is 2100 gold instead of 2400 gold. Uh, the item is fairly obtainable. It's not that expensive <clears throat> to get it. So um, I think we'll still see it a little bit, but maybe not as much as we were before. A little bit less appealing. It's, it's almost like a 50% reduction in range. It is 100 out of the 250. Um... Uh, Culture sheep stick cast range reduced from six fifty to six hundred. Small change. I think that's fine. Six fifty was was uh, out of a normal hero's attack range. Six hundred is going to be more in line with that. Although attack ranges in general got nerfed. Lunar tier passive health regeneration bonus increased from 0.4 to 0.5. Cost reduced from eighty gold to seventy five gold. So some buffs, not huge buffs, but buffs, and I, I think it's good. I think lunar tier is a really great item. I I buy it occasionally. On, uh, on like melee heroes with low mana pools, heroes that I want health through gen on. I, I think the item is good. I think 75 gold is a, a reasonable price point. And uh, hopefully people start uh, using this one a little bit more in comparison to how people were using Golden Apple before. I like it. Not too much more to add. Rune Cleaver, cleave damage increased by 10%. So this is a buff to Cleaver carries. Uh, we've mostly been seeing Dawnbringer and Thunderclaw carries uh, in the past meta, so hopefully Cleaver carries come back. We haven't really been seeing them a lot. Hopefully the nerfs to Dawnbringer and the buffs to Cleaver kind of balances that out a bit more. Sustainer now passively grants 5 attack damage. This is minimal, but I think this used to be in the game before, so this is almost like a revert. Toxin Claws no longer refunds any gold when sold. Okay, so Toxin Claws got the hatchet treatment. Uh, and what that means is you buy it, you can't sell it for any gold anymore. I think that's perfectly fine. I think Toxin Claws is an extremely strong leaning phase item. That's typically what you buy it for. Uh, early to mid game, it's very good. That little little bit of slow uh, can always be the difference in, in chasing somebody down. I, I love Toxin Claws. I think it's really strong. And uh, now you can't get the gold back for it when you want to get rid of it. So that's going to kind of balance it out a bit. Uh, do, 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 rank pick mode, mid wars, bug fixes. I don't know if we really want to, I don't think I really want to go over any of this stuff. Uh, I'm not really looking to go over bug fixes. Items, bound item that properly drops on death in all circumstances. Dreamcatcher and Soul Trap, health regeneration effect no longer gets dispelled by neutral creeps. Okay. So it acts uh, like health potion, mana potion, etc. Okay. That's fine. Uh, looks like that's it. We went through the whole patch, 4.9.3. I hope you guys enjoyed the patch analysis here with me. And uh, as I said at the beginning of the video, 
If you guys like the content, please help me out. Like the video. If you aren't subscribed, I hope you guys are subscribed. But if you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. I would appreciate it. Helps me out quite a lot. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy patch version 4.9.3. I uh, look forward to seeing you out there. And uh, game on.